At this rate, you'll destroy all the frogs in the entire county, my dear. I asked you before not to come down to my laboratory while I'm busy with my experiments. Oh. If these animals could speak, they'd have something to say about your taste. This always happens when you permit yourself to overindulge in your brandy. You are trying to provoke me, but this is not the moment, dear. You're leaving for the Edinburgh Congress with a lot of fanatical good-for-nothings like yourself, I suppose. Don't you ever dare to speak to me like that, Muriel. <laughs> oh, Stephen, you mustn't mind if I care about your going away so frequently. After all, I'm your wife. And I'd like to spend the night with you. Oh, Solange, so you saw everything. You even enjoyed it, I presume, didn't you? I am too old for that sort of thing, Baroness. I only wanted to ask the doctor his orders regarding the luggage. It's so late, and it's a long journey. I'm coming now. Why is he so nervous? He's been left in the stable too long. The drive will do him good. Keep your eyes open, David. I entrust my wife's safety to you. <laughs> Those new plants that just arrived today, sir, shall I leave them outside? Put them in the greenhouse, but look after them. They need a lot of water. I'll see to it, sir. Have a good journey. last. I thought he would never go, that devil. Oh, poor Stephen. You know I don't like you to talk about him that way. Why? Do you still love him? You're just making a fool of me. <laughs> it's you I love. <laughs> mm. I'm going to rid you of your vulgar ways and replace them with others much more subtle and refined. I don't understand you. It doesn't matter.
you, you had your revenge. Why don't you kill me? Kill, kill, kill both of us. You, I will kill you. You taught you. You and your filthy friends. But death, my dear, must come to you only after I've torn from your bodies all the suffering and pain a human being can stand. And you don't know yet how long it takes to die of pain. Oh, you're a monster. You don't know the hate I have inside. If you could see it, you would be terrified. You would kill me at once. But even by killing me, you can't free yourself from my hatred, Stephen Aerosmith. You can kill my body, but I'll never leave you in peace. Never, never! I'm not afraid of the dead. Corpses are destined to rot and fertilize the earth. I can still hurt you while I'm alive, Stephen. You thought you would inherit everything if I died, didn't you? My castle, all my wealth, so that you could continue your dirty experiments. But you've made a tremendous mistake, you know, Stephen. Do you understand that? Because I made a new will. After I realized what a vile, perverted monster I married. I made a new will. In which I bequeathed everything through good hands to my stepsister, Jenny. <laughs> you didn't expect that, did you, Stephen? That I'd leave everything to that simpering idiot? I would spare you both in exchange for that will. You could go away, together, free. Don't believe him. Once he has obtained what he wants, he'll kill us just the same. How can you trust such a monster? Silence, you stupid pig! Well, do you agree? No. No! No! Everything to her stepsister, to that irresponsible idiot. So it's all been for nothing. You can't kill her now. You must let her live. I have no intention of doing so. Why do you think I have helped you? Just to pamper your jealousy and your twisted instincts? You are wrong. I wouldn't risk the gallows for so little. I want my share. You promised it to me. You must be the heir, and I along with you. And that is exactly what will happen. I shall not give up my revenge. You must not forget that Muriel alive would be too great a danger for me and for you. No. No one will ever discover how my wife died. And Jenny will inherit everything. But Jenny is mad. And that is a well-known fact. What can she do with all that money? Her place is in a lunatic asylum, while I... I shall discover the secret that man has been looking for since the beginning of time. And don't be afraid. You will get your reward. A reward that will be more precious to you than all the wealth in the world. Now you'll see. Now you'll feel what I felt. No! No! <sighs> Leave her alone! Leave her alone! You beast, you! No! Please! I can't stand it! Go away! Gabriel! Gabriel!
You're home, Jenny. You didn't expect it to be so big. Hampton Castle is the largest in the county. I'm sure you'll feel at home here. And this is Solange. She will look after you and be useful to you in many ways. Welcome home, Miss Hampton. Miss Hampton? But she is my wife, the second Mrs. Arrowsmith. We were just married this very morning. I beg your... Yes, certainly. Come in, Mrs. Arrowsmith. Oh. What a peculiar plant. I've never seen one like it before. So fleshy, you mean? Yes. A rare plant. Nepente iridata. It is very dear to me. Now you can see how much you look like your stepsister. It's incredible. If it weren't for the hair, you'd say we were the same person. The dressing room is just in there. Thank you. I have a slight headache. I think I feel better if I take off my hat. You owe me an explanation, Stephen. What do you mean? Why did you marry her? We never spoke about it. <gasps> what on earth is the matter, dear? Oh, what an unpleasant surprise for you. Don't worry, it's harmless. It disappeared from my laboratory a few days ago. I couldn't find it anywhere. It's come a long way. I promise you, it will never happen another time. I'll take it back to the laboratory. What do you intend to do with her? Why did you marry her? We had a different plan. Then, I thought she was a poor imbecile, ugly and repulsive. And instead, she is beautiful and reminds you of Muriel. You are still in love with that witch. As far as witches are concerned, you are no one to talk. Muriel, as you know, I hated her. And Jenny? Yes. I might even come to like her. So now we'll never get rid of Jenny again, as you promised me you would. I shall have to put up with another mistress. 
On the surface, Jenny seems normal, but her doctor told me that her sanity hangs by a thread and living here could easily snap it. It would not be difficult to find a doctor willing to testify regarding her condition, and then I shall be legally responsible for the custody of her person and wealth. This seems to me the best and surely the safest way out. But anything unexpected might possibly crop up. Who will guarantee to us that her mental condition will get worse? I'll see to that. Look here. Stop, that chair. It's somewhat special. It could be dangerous. Oh, really? Why? It's a piece from the rather bizarre collection of your ancestors. I see.
calm yourself, dear. You've had a bad dream. It's nothing. It's all over now. It was a nightmare. Do you hear me? No, it wasn't a nightmare. I was there. And I saw blood. And that horrible plant. But I saw it here. The blood. But I tell you, I did see it. I'm not mad medicine really worked. Another couple of doses, and your patient will be ready for the asylum. I'm afraid so. She has reacted perfectly. The rest is understandable, of course. Poor thing, with her previous illness. Have you prepared the file for tonight? I will do it now. With this, this is the file you were supposed to give her last night. How is it that it's still here? You made a mistake. But it's impossible. There was only that one. Not at all. There was another one. A file of harmless saccharose. It isn't here anymore. You poured that one into the champagne instead of the hallucinogen. Fool! I, I'm sorry. Anyway. Without wanting to, we have had ample proof that it is not necessary to force her madness with external devices. But if her nightmares were really true, brought on, I, I don't know, by some mysterious being. The spirits of the castle? I have never met any. And they don't exist until it is proven to the contrary. But how do you explain that Jenny saw that mysterious plant dripping blood and heard two hearts beating? The fruits of an over-receptive mind, exalted like Jenny's. But she called out for David in her dream. I'm frightened. Oh, be quiet. I'll get Dr. Joyce here as soon as possible to verify the mental instability of my young wife. No, not yet. What if something terrible were to happen while he is here? I don't know why you want to run risks for nothing. All right. Anyway, I'm not so certain that I'm in such a hurry to get rid of her, you know. Jenny. She was there a moment ago. Very likely she decided to go upstairs to her room. Maybe she was tired. Just like that, without saying a word? It's rather odd. Perhaps she wasn't feeling very well. I'll go and see where she is. Jenny. Jenny, are you there? Jenny! Did you hear that? It came from down below. Quickly. It's Jenny. She must be down below in the vault. Forgive me, Stephen. I try to remember. 
But when everything is coming back to me, I feel as if my memory is paralyzed. Now, let's see. What is the last thing you can remember? I don't know. I was there with you in Solange. No, I was at the piano and I was playing. Then I don't remember. I suddenly found myself in that horrible place. I felt an unbearable pain in my hands and I looked down and they were covered with blood. I was trying to move the slab with my nail. I was terrified. I, I ran to the door and tried to get out. But someone had locked it from the inside and I couldn't open it. I screamed. I was so afraid of dying down there. I felt as if someone was pulling me down, down, down. I was so frightened, Stephen. You have to help me. It was nothing but your imagination. You're among friends here. You must trust us. Yes, I know, but that door, it was locked. No, Jenny, it was not locked. All I had to do was push it. You didn't open it because you didn't want to. It's a hysterical phenomenon which is very frequent in people who are in your state of mind. I, I know what you're thinking, Stephen, but I'm not mad. I'm sure of it. I was different before I came here. Perhaps we acted a little rashly in bringing you over here so soon. Maybe it was my fault. But I wanted you here with me. You won't send me back to the clinic, will you, Stephen? Tell me the truth, please. No, dear. I want you here. But I also want you to get better and to be happy. Therefore, I've decided to invite Dr. Joyce to come here. He had you under his care for a long time, and he knows your case well. And here, he will be able to look after you, observe you, and study the remedies that are best suited to you. You will continue on as if nothing had ever happened, and the doctor will be only a guest. You trust him, don't you? All right, but do stop treating me like a madwoman, Stephen, won't you, please? What foolish talk is that? Now... Take this mild drug, and you will have a nice sleep without any nightmares. I don't want it. I'm afraid of going to sleep. Just as you like. I will be right there in the armchair with my reading. Welcome to Hampton Castle, Dr. Joyce. Did you have a good journey? Yes, thank you. I'm very pleased to see you. And so, I'm sure, is my wife. How are you, Lady Arrowsmith? I must say you're looking extremely well. Oh, appearances can be deceptive, Doctor. However, I'm so pleased to see you again. What a lovely day. I didn't realize it. I hardly ever go out. Hampton Castle has become for me a sort of magnificent prison. Come. Let's take a stroll in the park. You know, there's a very strange, wild, rugged part behind the castle, which I'd like to show you. Jenny. But, dearest, the doctor has only just arrived, perhaps later on. It doesn't matter. Jenny, I would like to come. No, my husband's quite right. Napoleon, 1861. It's a wonderful brandy. Such a marvelous aroma. I thought you didn't drink. Many years ago, this castle may have lacked water, but it certainly never lacked alcohol. This was one of Muriel's very favorite drinks. Jenny, your husband has told me about everything that has recently happened here. You know, I am here only to help you. And, uh, you must try and force yourself to remember the details of what happened to you. Something 
that will help us to understand the cause. I don't know. In those moments, it's as if another person took possession of my mind and my body, and everything becomes vague and confused without any reason. And yet, there must be a reason. When you came here, your mental condition was perfect. Therefore, the reason for your trouble must be sought in these surroundings. Jenny, do you... do you have any suspicions that your mind... No. I don't think so. Yet I saw blood where there wasn't any. And I heard sounds where there weren't any. And there was that tomb. And that... that name. David? Oh, yes, David. You said that name coming out of the nightmare. And that name could perhaps help you to remember your dream. Are you really convinced? Why are you so interested in me? Or maybe you're like Stephen, you're convinced I'm insane. If what you're suggesting were so, I would not be here. And I'm going to help you, whether you like it or not. There is nothing to discover. You won't discover anything, Doctor. I hope I'm not disturbing you, Doctor. And that things are already improving. Later, if you'd like to come down to my laboratory, I shall be pleased to show you some experiments I've made on the electrolytic treatment of the blood. <laughs> Why are you laughing, dear? You and your experiments. <laughs> Jenny, do you hear me? What's the matter with you? I'm sorry, Stephen. I was confused. It's not important. It doesn't matter. Doctor, if I can help you, don't hesitate to ask me. Even though I assure you, I have already told you as much as I know. Thank you. I'll come to see your laboratory later. You must remember. You dreamt you were here, didn't you? I don't know. I don't remember. Don't torment me, please. Let me leave this place. Well, if you don't want me to help you. However, I warn you. You will end up a prisoner of your madness and obsessions forever. I don't know. I can't remember. I think I was standing there where you are now. David was embracing me. Suddenly he was hit on the face. My earring fell off, down in those leaves. I'm sure we will find it. while he was kissing me. Who was kissing you? I don't remember. It was dark. And then somebody came in while we were... Have you seen the earring before? No. Only that time. But, uh, are you sure you couldn't have lost it on some other occasion? Or under different circumstances? No, it's the first time I've ever seen it. The earring doesn't belong to me. It's very strange. Be careful! It was possible for me to give you back your youth. But I could do nothing about your mind. It doesn't matter, Doctor. It's not my mind which is useful to you when you need it. 
I hope I'm not disturbing you. I thought you had forgotten my invitation. Oh. Come along. I want to show you a unique experiment which could have sensational developments. Oh, very interesting, but uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to speak to you about your wife's illness. I'm sure that Jenny's hallucinations come partly from her sick mind. And I'm sure that they must also have a cause and foundation in the reality that surrounds her. No one could wish it were so, more than I do. But unfortunately, various symptoms seem to point to the contrary. Hmm, I thought so too, at first. But look. An earring. Yes. And so? It was in the greenhouse, under the leaves. Exactly where Jenny dreamt she was. But it doesn't belong to her, so it belongs to another woman. Muriel, for example, with whom Jenny identifies herself in the dream. This earring proves that there is something real behind Jenny's nightmares. And if we can discover what it is, we will solve the mystery. Her ladyship has acquired the habit of hiding things about the house and then forgetting later where she has put them. I told you about this. Oh, yes. It's true. A form of kleptomania. And so, what of the other earring? I don't think it should be difficult to find it. I'm sure it must be among her other jewels, naturally. If you'll allow me, I'll go and have a look. This would explain your strange discovery. Go along, Solange, and then rejoin us in the living room. Oh, I had almost forgotten. Lady Arrowsmith has changed her room. I don't think you knew about it. In the meantime, let me show you now the experiment I was speaking to you about. Excuse me, madame. Dr. Stephen would like to show Dr. Joyce some of your jewelry. If you would like to go down yourself, they will be very pleased. Oh, I'll come down with you then. Please, may I take your jewel box? Why, yes, of course. The earring is one of those in the portrait. There is no doubt about it. It's true, then, that they belong to Muriel. Undoubtedly. You see, my dear Derek, at first I was rather embarrassed to admit that my wife sometimes hide certain things, you know, without any reason and without remembering it. Solange says that you'd like to see my jewelry. I'm afraid they're not collection pieces, but I'll gladly show them to I you. I should like to see them. You're very kind, you know. Here's an emerald and diamond necklace that I like very much. Oh, and here's a gold bracelet that belonged to my mother. This one is from Francis C. Beautiful. This is an earring that... And these are Muriel earrings, dearest. You have never worn them. How do you explain these things? I don't know. I don't know how to explain them. Poor Jenny. She becomes stranger all the time. Do you really think it was wise of you to decide to let her sleep alone? As things are at the moment, it certainly can't do her any harm. One must proceed blindly, by trial and error. Her memory is blocked just now. Yes. I realize that her condition doesn't leave us much hope. And I know that you are doing everything humanly possible to help her. Oh, Stephen! Doctor! Oh. Oh. You should be more careful. Let's go down to the laboratory. We must... We must stop the bleeding at once. Is there anything I can do to help you? No, no thank you. It's nothing. She has a blood disease. Nothing serious. But we must stop the hemorrhage immediately. Otherwise, it could be dangerous. Come along, Solange.
It's been successful again this time. But the uh, solution can't last much longer. Jenny. Jenny. My blood. Downstairs in the laboratory. Go. Go. Hurry. Bell Hampton died in her 27th year. Muriel Hampton, 26 years old. Your pulse is regular. <laughs> she must have been completely out of control. You tend to your wound and I'll look after her. Stephen, I saw her as she was about to strike you. That face, it wasn't hers. It was Muriel's. What were you doing? What happened to you, Jenny? 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 I'm not Jenny. I hate Jenny. I hate her. I'm Muriel. <laughs> Jenny. I don't know what it was, but I shall certainly find out. Stephen. With... blood all over his face. But it wasn't me. Please forgive me. she wants from me? Why does she torment me so? Jenny, I saw it too. It's true. A strange and terrifying phenomenon. But you can be sure that nothing will change my decision. I'm going to help you, Jenny. When you speak to me, I begin to have some faith again and a little bit of hope. Promise not to leave me, Derek. I'm so afraid. I think it would be better for you if you were to leave the castle. Just for a short while some place that's calm and quiet. Very well. Just as you say. But his being here makes things so dangerous. Why did he go down into the crypt last night? Maybe he found out something. 
He found out enough to hang us both. He moved the slab on Muriel's tomb and discovered it was empty. So then we are ruined. He could turn us over at any moment now. You must stop him from leaving the castle at all costs. We must... Keep quiet. I know what we must do. You were looking for me, Doctor? Why, yes, I was. I wanted to have a few words with you before you went to the laboratory. Nothing would please me more. Thank you. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I wanted to speak to you about your wife. I'm convinced that it is absolutely necessary for her to leave the castle, for surroundings more suited to the cure of her mental troubles. What is the matter? You may speak quite freely. I want to tell you, there are ghosts in this castle, Dr. Ira Smith. <laughs> really? Tell me, have you seen them yourself, by any chance? Souls living in another world, trying to hide themselves behind Jenny, trying to possess her, to destroy her mind and free will. Your wife is not mad, but she runs the risk of becoming so if she continues to live here in this castle. Quite realize that. It was I who asked you to come here, and I shall abide by any decision you feel it necessary to make. I have already mentioned it to Jenny, and I'm sure she will agree. All the better. Will you be taking her back to the same clinic where she was treated before? Definitely yes, to begin with. I plan to take her away with me tomorrow. Well, I leave you to your work. Thank you, Doctor. Are you sure it will work? Wouldn't poison have been a safer way? There isn't a poison which leaves no traces. In this way, we don't run any risks and the result is the same. Come in. Excuse me, sir. I forgot about the clean towel. Oh, that's all right.
Jonathan. Jonathan, what happened? Jonathan. What happened, Jonathan? There's no doubt he had a heart attack. Probably he suffered from a weak heart without knowing it. Quite possibly. Also, the overheated atmosphere of the room could easily have had some influence. Please, Jenny, go back to your room. Solange, go with her ladyship. This one is certainly a case that makes one think very seriously about the frailty of human life. Only ten minutes ago, that man was the picture of health. And now he is ready for the worm. Please allow me not to appreciate your cynicism, Dr. Arasnet. Forgive me, my dear Derek. The fact is, you have remained too much a man to be a scientist. Oh, and before I forget, will you think about making out a death certificate for the authorities? Right Something else, if you don't mind. Will you help me to carry poor Jonathan's body into his room? Is there anything else I can get you, madame? No. All I want to do is leave this house before it's too late. You look a little distraught, Jenny. I realize that what happened to Jonathan was a painful shock to you, but you mustn't be disheartened. Stephen, I can't stand it. I don't want to stay here anymore. I'm leaving tomorrow with Derek for wherever he chooses to take me. Anything will be better than this hell. With Derek? I thought so. He's bewitched you with his stories. What are you saying? Why are you talking like that? You had so much faith in him, now? Now? I see that his so-called treating you was just an excuse to flirt shamelessly with you. And don't say you didn't realize it yourself. But I swear to you, I've known Derek for years. He's such a good friend of mine. He's so affectionate and unselfish. You may be blind, my dear, but I'm not. I know his type. Affectionate, unselfish, and always ready to take advantage of a beautiful patient. Weak and rich. No, don't you dare say that. Derek hasn't done anything wrong. Are caresses, holding hands and soft looks all part of the cure. You forget that greenhouses are made of glass and I am not blind. I love you, Jenny. I, I don't want to lose you. I can't stand the idea of your going away with him. Don't leave me alone, Jenny. I don't want to, Stephen. But I'm so frightened here. We'll go away together. Tomorrow. We, we'll go to Spain, to Italy, wherever you want. You'll leave all your nightmares behind you. And we won't come back here until you have completely recovered. All right? Then we leave tomorrow. Just as you say, Stephen. Certainly, this journey can do you nothing but good. You'll be able to amuse yourself, to breathe purer air, to find real tranquility. But I cannot pretend that I shouldn't have preferred another solution. Do you mean the asylum, Dr. Derrick? Or have you other plans? But Jenny, 
Why are you saying these things? It seems as if you had suddenly lost all faith in me. Perhaps you see me as some clinical case to be kept under observation and studied. It will be bad enough if that's true, yet in a way I wish it was so. Because if what happened last night has put any ideas in your head, I'll be obliged to consider you simply one of the most contemptible of men. I realize that after what you have said, there's nothing I can answer. Whatever I might say would only confirm your suspicions. Now the only thing left for me to do is to go away. But before I go, I want to tell you this, Jenny. I have always been very fond of you. And any time you need me, I shall be happy to help you. blood. It's turning to poison in my veins. Cold, heavy, like mercury. She wants it back. Muriel, that witch, she wants her blood. Stephen, do something. Save me. I need new life. Young, pure blood. I need Jenny's blood. Very well, then. You'll get it tomorrow. Is your body. My heart. Oh, take my heart. Oh, take, take my heart. My heart. Oh, no. oh. Who killed you, Stephen?
Well, have a good journey, and thank you again for everything you've done for my wife. Oh, there is nothing to thank me for. And uh, would you please say goodbye to her for me? Goodbye, Derek. I'm grateful to you for trying to help me. Oh, I'm delighted to be able to wish you a pleasant trip once more. And I hope to see you again very soon. Why are you going? Don't you find enough to interest you here? Do you like the Hampton Crest? Goodbye and good luck. Stephen, I beg you, we must be far from here before he is able to speak to anybody. I am preparing the electrolysis. You know that it's only a matter of a few hours. Everything will be ready for you by this oh. evening. And then we'll leave during the night, all three of us. At least officially. I'm going down to the laboratory. Listen, Stephen, I wonder if... Come along. There's no time to lose. to free you from your nightmares forever, Jenny. Your sister is calling you, isn't she? Can't you hear her? Now that damned voice will be silent forever! <coughs> Miserable, <coughs> handsome witch, your race is Shut finished! Up, Stephen! I can't stand it! <sighs> Without any oh, more God. dreams. What are you doing? Jenny. Come along now, lie down.
It will still take a couple of hours. I'm going up to prepare everything for the journey. You stay still. Yes, Stephen. It's my flesh you are touching. The flesh you thought you destroyed. But you can't destroy flesh any more than you can love or hate. It's all the same thing. What do you want? I punished you for your crime. No. You gave me extreme pleasure. You taught me the pleasure of the torment of the flesh, which turns into ecstasy. Yes, Stephen, that passes through life into death and receives eternity. Now I'm going to reward you with that same pleasure. Come, darling. Don't be afraid, Stephen. I'll stay with you with my body and my senses until someone comes and destroys my heart. Now! <laughs> Help! Help! <laughs> 
Don't worry, Jenny. Now all of your nightmares are over and done with forever. 